Hello and welcome to the Maxwell Center, site of the second of 25 races in this year's TM Master Cup Series Tour, the Round of Los Angeles. 46 cars will take the green here on this short oval that, as you can see, is enclosed. But, as you notice, there is an open roof here. The Maxwell Center is named after Pacific Trucks founder Maxwell Turner and not the monstrous Robert Maxwell. Much like last year, tires are a massive issue here as most of the field has been burning through tires a lot quicker than they'd like. And nobody wants to be the first one to pit under green here. Because if you pit early and a caution comes out, you could lose up to three laps, effectively ending your race. That, plus the tire issues I already mentioned, makes this not exactly the most popular track with the drivers right about now. Speaking of the drivers, let's meet the starting grid. 46 drivers will take the green, led by Tom Moore in the number 4 Volpe, and Marco Diaz Castaneda in the number 9 Richter Motorsports car. Joe Olenek is in row 2, along with Ingrid Hadeland, who put in an excellent qualifying lap. Ryan Matthews and Kurt Pliskin in row number 3. Row 4, Luciano Salvarol and David Krikorian, who cut his teeth at Irwindale Speedway not far from here. Cameron Taylor and rookie sensation Saul Fischl in row 5, an excellent effort from Ben Atkins, the second Matthews car in row 6, and Chris Davenport is from 6 hours north of here. Yevgeny Kuznetsov in car 15, fastest new Liberty car, and Adrian Devereaux in row 7. Mike Malone, fastest promoter's option, and another good effort from Packer Carroll in row 8. Row 9 is Alessandro Rossini, the Italian, and Scott Bates, who comes from Oklahoma. Zachary Fitzwater, another promoter's option, is qualified faster than Arto Keck in a non-debut. Daniel Sharp and Jess Young are both making their debuts along with Daffy Howard whose end game is to finish a little higher than 23rd where he starts. Greg Woodard on the outside of row number 12. A good effort there. Brandon LaRoe and Truman Ellison will come from row 13. Liv Eklund the rookie from Sweden and Gaspar de Souza from Portugal. He has another promoter's option. Ian Cooper is going to make their run from uh, inside of row 15 along with Craig Janser. Tony Durbin hit the wall in qualifying, but he's still qualified 31st. Lucas Grabert in car 34, also having a solid weekend. Zach Webster, Mason Yokoyama looking for improvements. Yokoyama fast independent. Ashby hit the wall in qualifying as well, along with Chuck Johnson. Timothy Ruiz has had some issues all weekend, but they look like they've gotten them sort of for the race. Gareth Hunt along with them. Serrano and Lester have both had interesting weekends so far. Lester's team is from around here. Ike Durbin and John Dilks are having about the weekend they were expecting, from what I understand. Freya Mast and Daniel Lechleiter in row 22. Clay Gibson and Nathan Ormond all had issues in qualifying, and that's why they all start as far back as they do. Ormond, in particular, has got a bit of a heartbreak there because uh, didn't set a time in qualifying, but had he done so, he probably would have been about 34th, which is a big improvement from where he was last week, and uh, hopefully they can get through this race without any issues. Anyways, the field being led by to the green by Tom Moore. That's a late start there, but I'm not surprised given the length of this track. And I don't think anyone was really ready for that, as uh, maybe some people further back in the field were, but nobody looked ready for that start. I'm a little surprised. Moore gets out to a pretty good lead. Castaneda giving way. Olenek coming up to second. But look at that lead that Tom Moore has so far. Remember, this was the car that's been driven by Leonid Roderick for the past few years, and Roderick is calling the strategy on this car, and um, we may hear from him if we get the chance. Some defensive driving here by Ryan Matthews. Now, this 06 car, Ryan Matthews, he was booed in driver introductions. If we get a closer look at that car, I don't think it'll be any, re any uh, mystery as to why, but he's having a great weekend so far, and we're watching him battle Luciano Savarol in the red, white, and blue Erlantis car number five. Here is Cooper. Now, we talked that they were having a good weekend so far. Uh, didn't qualify all that well, but they've been really making use of that, that painted white line to get that car to turn. Tony Durbin following them around. Cooper in this two car. They're sending it in on Ellison. Oh, contact with Truman Ellison. Hang on to it. And they managed to gather that thing up. Very aggressive on the opening laps is that emerald green car number two. Tony Durbin jumps to the outside to get around them because uh, that is that's taking it that's taking it very aggressive very early and that's kind of what we've known them to do throughout their very long career in the series. Kind of odd when you think about it how long some of these drivers have been around. Tony Durbin won the championship back in 2007. How much time flies? Here is Arto Kakinen in car number one. Hard to believe he's been around in the series for over a de for almost a decade. Full time anyway. Ellison on the on the painted line a little bit. Kekin and we're a little surprised he qual he didn't uh, make a second attempt at qualifying, but surprisingly, uh, Richter Motorsports opted to sit on that time, even though uh, they could have gone out and tried to go for a faster lap. They seemed rather content with that. 
I find that decision rather puzzling as Daniel Sharp is that uh, at white and blue 24 car. Daniel Sharp uh, is also, I believe, from around the area, making his debut for Tenere Motorsports, and that is actually the Team Thunder car. And he qualified well ahead of his uh, teammates. In fact, he was the only one of those three cars to uh, seemingly not have any issues all weekend. Uh, lechleiter has been having some issues with uh, the engine, and Gibson also has been having uh, uh, similar issues getting uh, uh, with the uh, transmission, I believe. Now, Saul Fischl really lit the world on fire in his Master Cup debut. And uh, we're getting pretty, we're getting a lot of really good vibes from uh, from Fischl right now, especially given how he's performed all weekend. He's running in eighth, and he looks very calm out there. Um, yeah, he's still 18 years old, which I think that's the scariest part. If that, if this is what he's like now, imagine, imagine what he'll be like when he hits his prime. If he continues on this rate of improvement, we could be looking at a legend in the making right here. Car number eight, Saul Fischl. Um, now, he was involved in some controversy involving a stacked restart late in the round of San Antonio. There have been no penalties from that, and that is quite puzzling to most of the field. Uh, anyways, we're looking at Casey Lesser in that black and neon yellow zero car. Oh, into John Dilks! There's some handling issues with that zero car. Good save by Dilks. Uh, but uh, Alex Harrison Racing is actually based from around the area, and that's really the only team that's had the opportunity to test here. In fact, um, AHR is the only team to be running in all three categories this week because the TM Lights and the Pacific Trucks are, are the uh, support events here. Tony Durbin, I mentioned earlier, he is the 07 uh, Drivers' Champion, and he's had some issues all week, but um, and he hit, remember, he also hit the wall in qualifying. Didn't go for a second lap, didn't seem to mind uh, starting further back in the field, but if there's one guy who likes a challenge, it's Tony Durbin, and if there's one guy who's savvy enough and experienced enough to come to the field, it's him. Here's Jess Young, the uh, Hong Konger, making uh, her first start in the series. Yes, Young is uh, was uh, on the uh, Lynx Racing development list, but uh, and some people thought she might have been in with a shot to get the 11 car instead of Liv Eklund. But uh, Young apparently turned it down because, remember, Young did not run the entire schedule in the TM Lights last year. This is uh, Young getting her first start along with Daffy Howard in the double zero car in the duck machine. Driving the uh, Hal Rucker car. This is a very popular entry here as much as it should be. It's a very resilient competitor looking, oh, Young wide. Very wide there for Young in the 39. But uh, it's a very resilient competitor in a very resilient car. Uh... Some people describe this car as handling like a bit of a buck and Bronco earlier in the weekend, but as long as he doesn't get flipped out, as long as he doesn't flip around the arena, I think he'll be fine. And uh, given that it's a lot harder to flip a Master Cup car than anything else, I think uh, Howard will be doing all right. There's no relation between him and former champion Joseph Howard, but uh, Daffy Howard having a great, uh, having a very strong uh, debut weekend as we're watching the two leaders, Tom Moore and Joe Olenek. Looks like last weekend almost, doesn't it? As they encounter lap traffic, they've gone by Gareth Hunt in the 42, closing in on Johnson in the 32 car, that uh, distinctive Calarsa car. And that's Ryan Matthews closing in on them, I think, as well. A lot of the back markers here, they don't have to be uh, all that nice here, especially because they're trying to stay on the lead lap. Whoa, whoa Yancer! <laughs> and that's what I was talking about. There's um, the general rule of thumb is that as long as you're trying to stay on the lead lap, you are entitled to fight the leader because if a caution comes out, that can uh, really help out. You, that can really help your situation out. Here comes Matthews in that 06 car. Now uh, he is really forcing the issue there on the 42 and the 81, and he's going around Olenek. That's going to be second for the Matthews Motorsports car. Remember, this car is running full time for the first time, and this team is more than ready for the uh, full-time challenge, and it, uh, it's become a, more than apparent. Matthews, uh, we expected Ben Atkins to be the faster of the two, honestly, this weekend, but uh, oh boy, are we wrong on that. Speaking of other things, we're, uh, well, that's a, a little surprising. Ben Atkins doing very well in this 90 car, along with his team owner, Ryan Matthews. This uh, black and green car, very easy to spot, despite the slightly muted colors on it. Uh, he's running inside the top five. He's gotten a podium before, but it was a long time ago. But uh, the former Dash Cup champion definitely knows how to run up front and is a very respectable driver out there. Castaneda has fallen back to eighth in that number nine car. Uh, he's going to have, he's trying to hold off Cameron Taylor. There is 
Chris Davenport, the 17. Davenport throwing it in. Davenport not giving Fischl too many options there. Chris Davenport, what a run that he's having. This is a this is a different Chris Davenport, I think, that we've been seeing lately. Um, then again, it also helps that KLTV is no longer telling me what to say about him. Uh, Davenport in the, is having a very strong run. Atkins, big slide there. Big wiggle from the 90 car. Davenport taking advantage. Uh, remember, I said Davenport from far up north. Uh, he's uh, not from uh, Southern California. He's from Northern California, and he this is uh, he will have a home race proper this year. As Tom Moore has now run into Nathan Orman in that 95 car. I remember saying Orman had some issues in qualifying. Yeah, it's showing that that car was faster than um, what he showed. What then uh, ha not having a time in qualifying anyway, because he's made his way up. Made his way up through the order a bit, and Tom Moore, the race leader, is having quite a bit of problems catching him. Um, I almost wonder now if Moore is pacing himself and using Orman as a benchmark, because that wouldn't be a bad thing to do. No, he's going to try to get around him. <laughs> well, that's a commentator's curse if I ever heard of one, but um, there's worse commentator's curses you could have, I suppose. Most of the field was expecting a lot of yellows today, especially given the high tire wear we're seeing, and not only that, the... Um, well, the lack, the long pit lane meaning that I don't think too many people are going to be hitting the pit lane under green. Okay, now Ashby as a driver, I'm a surprise, hasn't gone anywhere. This 55 car has been mired at the back of the field all race long, whereas both their teammates have been running very strongly. So they've definitely got a mechanical problem on that car that's been going unaddressed all weekend. And uh, I'm not sure why they haven't caught it or if... Maybe they just haven't been able to find anything, anything to do with it because Ashby more than a more than a capable driver out there. Got several averages averaging about one win a year in the series, which is not a uh, easy thing to do. John Dilks in the 68 car trying to stay in the lead lap. He's in 36th right now. Uh, he is uh, doing a pretty good job. Oh, giving uh, giving the leader just enough room to fit a car in there, but not making their life easy. Which again, he is just about to. He just lost uh, a lap, so. While it might be rather annoying for Tom Moore, it's hard to say it's entirely out of line from him. Uh, here is Zachary Fitzwater, the uh, Australian driver. Makes his, um, I understand he makes his home in Pennsylvania these days. Um, the Fitzwater 59 car running up in 13th. His Master Cup debut. Not his first attempt, I don't think, but this is his first start. He's having a pretty decent run. And he's, uh, again, running solidly in the points, as you see. 13th, trying to run down David Krikorian who, uh, of course, has got more than his fair share of laps in short tracks in California. As you see, going now through the grid, uh, through the order, rather, several drivers have lost a lap already because this is a much longer green run than uh, I think many of us were anticipating. Similar to last week, I think, we're anti when, whenever we anticipate a uh, lot of yellows, seems like, the, uh, seems like uh, we get lots of long green runs, and, of course, what happens when you anticipate a clean race? Well, yellow fever, seemingly. Um... Davenport in car number 17 trying to run down Luciano Savaral to try to take over the third spot. That is still a surprise. Tony Durbin in this 12 car is a man on a mission here. Up to 27th, he's really beginning to march his way through the field. And uh, who's to say? And uh, well, if this shows anything, it shows that when you put a fast car at the back of the field, you get some fun things to see them try to come through the field. And Tony Durbin definitely uh, was up to the challenge. Malone, he's the driver he's going by in the 05. Uh, Tony Durbin in uh, that car number 12, making uh, making up a lot of good time. And now up to 26th place is uh, Tony Durbin. Now who are we looking at? Arto Kakinen is now in a sandwich of two Lynx cars. A bit of double jeopardy for him, and he's got the double zero car of Daffy Howard right in front of him. And uh, Kakinen trying to get around Hadalad. Hadalad lets him go. That's Eklund, and actually that's Young right behind right behind um, Eklund's car. Uh, that blue car, that, that blue livery, we see Eklund in. That's only going to be run at night events, we understand. That's going to go back to being a yellow car for the next round out of Carbondale. Eklund really... Oh, what a, what a throw there by Eklund. Throwing that car in there very deep on Hadeland. Another look at that, I think. Yep. Hadeland just a little bit of a slip, but Eklund just sends that car in, and she's going to make it stick. And Hadeland and Eklund, they have kind of been uh they really have seemed like quite the odd couple over there at Lynx racing and uh, the sort of war of words in the press has kind of continued 
with Eklund saying that uh, Hadland will be in her mirror before she knows it. Uh, well, anyways, Adrian Devereaux in car number 74 is coming off of his win at uh, Remembrance Field with... Honestly, I'm a little surprised he hasn't done much of anything so far. He's mired back in 22nd place, and I'm not seeing the usual kind of speed that we see out of Adrian Devereaux. However, we are seeing that speed out of Chris Davenport in the 17. Davenport onto the apron! That was... That could have been a disaster. Chris Davenport is a... Is, oh, he's getting a little bit of help from the 95 car. Ormond holding his line. Savarol not able to really do anything about it because the 17's on his inside. Very clever driving and very clever racecraft by Davenport to box Savarol in behind the 95 of Ormond. That's not going to be good for the tires in that car, though. I guarantee you that. Joe Lenick now closing in on... Uh, that is Daniel Lechleiter in the 10. They've had motor issues, uh, engine issues, I should say, all weekend long. And uh, Lechleiter, a very credible driver in his own right. Uh, but uh, you got to get by him, first of all. And here is the 13 car, David Krikorian, coming in on Packer Carroll. Uh, did they make contact there? I don't know for sure. And, oh, I saw something out of the 13, I think. I'll have to see. Maybe that was nothing. Um, hopefully not, anyways. Uh, Krikorian having a good outing here in front of his home crowd. He's running in 12th place. See what happens to the uh, 13. He's, ha he's uh, been running very strongly for the Hottest Walter team all year long. And, yep, there was something under there. We got a fire. Fire in the hole for David Krikorian. He's gonna, that's going to be a yellow. He's going to be one of the an early retiree. And, unfortunately, Krikorian out early. All right, buddy, heads up. Inside line 12, 25, 39. It's the first thing you got to worry about. Let them go if they're going to give you a problem. Uh, the gun let the five go, let them go. He'll burn his tires off like he always does. Leonid Roderick with some glowing um, glowing uh, endorsements there for Luciano Savarol's long run pace there. And uh, they get the green flag here on lap 68. Um, as you see, more now pulling out a bit on Tony Durbin. Uh, Luciano Savarol right behind is going to be right behind him on the outside. That is Brandon LaRoe in the 25 car. Uh, Roderick uh, advising more not to mess around with Brandon LaRoe, who is one of the better, uh, was been one of the better super sub drivers in the TM Light series over the past few years. Of course, LaRoe very, very capable in the in that division, as we've seen. And LaRoe goes right on by. That is Young in the 39, who is uh, a little bit of an unknown quantity, but Young, a very capable driver, but also. Uh, one of the more low-risk drivers, I think, out of Lynx's uh, driver development pool. And uh, at that stage of your career, that's not a bad thing to be. As uh, Savarol not exactly getting that five car on the low line either. Looks like they're going to let the lap cars go and fight amongst themselves. Savarol sees an opportunity. Is he going to go for it? Looks like he is. It's Gaspar D'Souza on the 30 car as uh, merging from the pit lane. I'm not sure why. And... Um, Savarol goes by, but D'Souza well down the order now. Very unfortunate for him. As we look now at Joe Olenek in car 23, who's trying to get around the 90 of Atkins. Ben Atkins having a great run here so far. Actually, Matthews Motorsports in general doesn't quite look like the team that uh, some people thought. This looks like the Matthews Motorsports I think some of us were expecting a couple of years down the line. They look more than comfortable running this high up the running order. Cars 06 and 90. Here's the other one. Ryan Matthews, the 06 car. It looks like he saved his tires a little bit better. And Atkins might be might have to pull the tires off a bit. And if he wants to do that, he could just run the, run the high line and uh, take the corners a little bit easier in order to uh, sort of get the tire heat back down in that car number 90 as Matthews goes by. Back running with Tom Moore again. We're looking back at him. He's gotten the lead back from Savarol, and he's now, he's now got Young in his windshield. Moore wide. Coming off of four, that's going to give Savarol a big run on him. Is he going to be able to do anything about it? No, maybe. Moore is trying to squeeze him off a little bit. Savarol is going to have a run now, going into turn three. Great stuff uh, here at the front of the field. The car behind him is Serrano. He's no he's no factor at all. As Savarol takes the lead back in the Atlantis car. Now, these two drivers putting on a really good show out in front. Gaspar Souza, as we mentioned, has had some issues in this 30 car. Oh, he's slowing. He's got more problems with that car. Uh, he needs to be cleared low. He needs to be cleared low. He's pulled high. He's Oh, this isn't going to be good. Oh, and that's Gibson. Uh, I don't think his spotter cleared him low. 
I think this... I don't know what was going on there, but, um... Uh, oh yeah, I think there was definitely oil on the track on the 79, just had nowhere to go but right into it. That kind of epitomizes Clay Gibson's whole weekend, just a lot of misfortune, and that's a little hard to put on Gaspar D'Souza, but at the same time, maybe he should have pulled low instead of high, but at the same time, if you've got oil leaking out of your car, the last thing you want to be running on is paint. Um, that could be bad news very quickly. As you see the running order at the top left of the screen, we are a right about half distance here in the round of Los Angeles. That's another late restart. You may notice there were some cars that were at the tail end of the lead lap in front of the five car. Uh, if I was going to go through the, uh, why that rule is still into effect, we'd be here for another five hours. Uh, anyway, Savaral is uh, still leading here. Tony Durbin behind him trying to get back in the lead lap. Uh, Savaral has got a ways to go before anyone really challenges him for position here. So I think he's going to be, I uh, think he's going to let most of these guys go. Just looks like D'Souza's gotten that car back on track, even though uh, there's no rear end panel on it for two weeks in running. Uh, I don't think whatever whoever's sponsoring that is going to be terribly happy about that, but uh, uh, no one asked for what their opinion was. Um, as we see uh, more lap cars going by. Oh, Hadeland there in the 19, almost. Uh, almost uh, had, a, had a big moment down there. Looking back at Tom Moore, there's Fischl coming by on the inside in car number eight. Car with white, white rims, fairly easy to spot. Uh, there's Ryan Matthews right behind him, another car that's easy to find. Chrome rims on the 06 car this week, and those uh, maybe a little hard to see, maybe not. The red valence and those red, um, the red roll cage on the inside of the 06. That is going to be a recurring thing, uh, theme throughout the year as both of them go by Moore, and who is getting quite a bit frustrated, I think, behind the 25, Carl LaRoe. Looking now at Fischl, who has moved his way up to second. Um, and now Fischl trying to, uh, Savaral still in the high side here. I think, I think Savaral trying to save tires here and uh, stay on the high line. But uh, I think he's going to want to abandon that because here comes Fischl and here comes Matthews. Ryan Matthews almost out of the paint. Fischl pushing a bit off of four. And uh, coming now down into turn three again. Matthews all over Fischl, but Fischl takes the lead. So the 18-year-old driver back to the lead again. So he is two for two leading laps in his Master Cup Series career. Two races, two, uh, twice he's led laps. Great, uh, if he keeps this up, he'll be a champion in no time flat. Um, Fischl, of course. Uh, wasn't able to compete in this race last year because of, well, he wasn't old enough to compete in the TM Lights race. That's the only other time the, uh, a, a TM Sanctioned Series has been here. So, uh, with Ryan Matthews now closing in his rearview mirror, I'd like to point out that Matthews Motorsports, for I may have already mentioned this, but uh, Matthews Motorsports, I don't think too many people are surprised that they're this good this quickly. Um, this, there they come, officials. Oh, official trying to get Matthews a little bit lower on the track, but Matthews corrects, corrected himself because that car looked like it was going to slide a bit up the track. So six car looks like he's getting faster and faster though, as uh, the run goes on a bit longer. Was official wa a little bit wide there, Matthews? Uh, that 06 car looks very, very loose on the inside line, and I won, and I. Matthew, Ryan Matthews is an old enough driver to know when it's uh, not enough to push it and when it's um, and when it's okay to just throw it in there and knows and he'll know that it's going to stick. Uh, official giving him quite a hard time going by though. Matthews is going to fall back in line a bit. No, he's not. He's just trying to get Tom Moore to get Tom Moore's attention. There he goes. Big run by Matthews and is he going to make the pass stick going into one? Yes, it looks like he is. New leader Ryan Matthews in car number 06. Matthews Motorsports leading laps and it's great to see. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you may now you may now have gotten a close enough look at that car to know why he was booting driver introductions. Um, anyways, looking back at Scott Bates at car number 6 running in 5th place. A very quiet 5th place I'd like to point out. Um, so is the Volpe Racing Team not the only Volpe cars having good runs today. The Team EFR cars are as well. Bates in this car number six has been having a uh, quiet weekend so far, which is something he'd like to see. Adrian Devereaux is now beginning to show a bit more pace as the Frenchman beginning to hunt down Joe Olenek, and he's running in 10th. The ACAB car uh, very well received among some parts of the crowd in uh, here in LA. 
Uh, Devereaux looking for a championship for the Michelin Suns, and that's something that, uh, despite how long they've been in the series, they've never done with their flagship car. Hard to believe with the number of races and championships they've won that it's never been their flagship car that's won any of them. As Fischl takes the lead back. Car number eight, Saul Fischl now back on point. A great move there, and it looked like he might have been getting a bit of a hurry up from that number four car, the Aperture Science Volpe of Tom Moore. Been a little bit focused only on a couple of battles here so far, and uh, to be honest, that, those are the best things and most, most interesting things that have been happening on track today. Or tonight, I should say, as Greg Woodard in the 41 car has found himself in frame quite a bit. But, oh, Woodard holding off official. And uh, that's not going to that's not gonna earn too many. Uh, that's not going to earn him a whole lot of uh, gratitude from the Saul official camp. But anyways, uh, on board now with the car number four of Tom Moore. Get a better look at the uh, better look at better look at Fischl's line. Fischl very wide off of four. That's a big run that Tom Moore is going to get going into turn one. And you'll notice, you see, you can really tell now how rectangular, like rectangularly shaped this track is. And with the way the banking is profiled and where the racing groove is, it does make it a very awkward racing line around here. Um, and that's not exactly helping the tire situation as we now look off the back of the number four car as Moore is now uh, back in the lead of the race. Fischl right behind him, and Matthews back in third. You see Young and uh, Serrano back there, and I think right behind those two it is Yokoyama, if I'm not mistaken, in the 76 car. Mason Yokoyama, the Texan and Independence Trophy competitor. And now we look again. Scott Bates hounding Alessandro Rossini for sixth. The sixth car has really kind of fallen back a bit. Ben Atkins has gotten by him as well. Bates really beginning to turn the heat up on Rossini. Rossini wide as Scott Bates now throws it in. He's going to make it stick. No, not, not uh, coming across the line. Davenport willing to join this fight as well in that uh, Royal Blue 17 car. Joel Lennick and Cameron Taylor also kind of watching this rather intently as well. Scott Bates moving his way back up into the uh, sixth position. So Scott Bates move him back up and uh, we'll see what he's able to do in the Scotty TV car. Scotty D TV car, I should say. That is a little hard for me to say at the moment. Anyways, back up to the battle for the lead here with Ryan Matthews and Tom Moore. Uh, cars, uh, the 06 car trying to size up more. There is the lap car of Gaspar Souza on the inside. He's holding his line. Greg Woodard is trying to find somewhere to go at the moment. Right behind them is Young, who is, uh, no, is no factor in this whatsoever. Here is the 06 going on the inside of uh, Moore. He's got the lap car of D'Souza in front of him. is doing what he should be doing, which is holding a line. The last thing you want a lap car to do is change his line suddenly. And uh, D'Souza doing a very good job to not do that because you take the leaders by surprise if you do that. There we go. That sorted itself out. I kind of wonder if Moore had to back off. Uh, whatever the case is, Ryan Matthews has now assumed the lead of the race. And I would imagine that he'll dispatch the 30 car fairly quickly here. Uh, D'Souza's a bit, not exactly slow, but he is definitely off the pace and he's got a lot of damage. And not only that, but he's a gentleman and he's very courteous, so I would expect him to uh, move over and get out of the way fairly quickly. All right, so now we're going to the battle for 18th. Not the battle between Hadland and Howard here, but the battle between Hadland and Eklund. There you see that blue and yellow 11 car. That's a uh, livery that Eklund's going to be running at all the night races, and that's it. Uh, so, won't see too much of it. Hadland in this 19 car. I kind of wonder what uh, she's made of having a, essentially a fifth string driver as not only as her teammate, but, but ahead of her at the moment. Um, haven't uh, had too many opportunities to, uh, to, uh, to ask about that, but either way, this is the most interesting rivalry on the grid at the for the time being. Um, Eklund in Eklund currently holding advantage, especially now that uh, now that she's come all the way through the field in order to be ahead of Hadland. You kind of wonder whether or not uh, that'll be a part of uh, some of the inevitable uh, post-race jawing between the two of them, because you know for sure that's going to happen. Uh, and oh, a bit wide there. But I would also like to point out that the 19 car has been one of the fastest cars in old tires. And uh, every time they've been able to adjust, uh, that makes adjustments in the 19, and she's gone faster and faster. So, yeah, it doesn't look good when you qualify fourth and slip back through the field. But I'd like to point out that I don't think anyone was expecting Hadland to qualify that well at all. Um, and uh, Ike Durbin in the 711 car in the pits. 
you may have noticed on the uh, uh, on the background a little while ago. Uh, Eklund now currently holding on to 18th. Back up to the battle for the lead here with Ryan Matthews and Tom Moore. That's Tim Ruiz right in front of them. And if you noticed Ruiz in the background of uh, that battle between Eklund and Hadeland, well, um, that means the leaders are closing in on that fight as well. So this could be rather interesting. I don't think Ruiz wants much to do with that because Hadeland and Eklund are not giving each other a whole lot of room. And uh, I think Matthews in the 06 car is uh, just trying to keep Tom Moore behind him. Power the double zero holding holding station right there in the Rucker car. Here is Hadeland having another go at Eklund. Eklund's uh, trying to squeeze her down a little bit. Giving just, well, not really, but giving just enough space to take the racing line away. Um, these two are not getting away from each other, and this is definitely one of the best battles on the track right now, even though it is only for 18th. Um, sometimes that happens in a race. I think uh, one of the best battles to run in San Antonio was between the Independence Trophy cars for a position that gave no championship points. That's how things go sometimes. But hey, we'll appreciate it what, as long as we got it. Hadeland getting a good run off the uh, in the uh, shoot there. I'm getting tongue-tied rather quickly. The battle for the lead is starting to heat up behind them, so let's see if we can switch over to that. Here we go. Uh, Tom Moore now having a run on Ryan Matthews, and now I kind of wonder if Moore seeded the lead to Matthews a bit, because this he's making this pass look kind of easy. And I wonder if he was just letting Matthews get away a little bit and to try to cool his own tires down and to avoid any uh, entanglements with a slow lap car. But Matthews trying to have a comeback here. No, not quite. Tom Moore able to get uh, to clear him, and Moore now is going to have to deal with a couple other cars who aren't so willing to uh, uh, go off the lead lap. Because um, oh, Eklund got really wide off the uh, off of four there, and um, yeah, that's going to be a, a bit of a hard stopper for the for the spotters. I would, uh, especially since uh, given where we are, I think we're going to have another round of uh, we're going to have another round of pit stops. It'd probably be under green. Hold your breath because there's not a whole lot of room in pit entry and pit exit. But Eklund here in this 11 car trying to get underneath the double zero car of Daffy Howard in the, uh, the duck machine. As Hadland beginning to pull away from them a little bit. From both of these two. And we're on board the slam cam now with the uh, double zero. That's, and that is Hadland. Oh, Hadland very wide off of four. Very, very wide. That's a big, that's gonna be something Howard's gonna take advantage of. Now, that's a smart move by Howard to let those two just kind of wear each other, let the two Lynx drivers wear each other down a little bit. And um, just kind of stick his beak in there, get a little bit of the apron, but that car, the double zero car is handling so well right now. And uh, he's, he he's, looks like he's gonna be able to get by Hadeland and take 18th place. That's, uh, so that's the type of veteran driving, not common among uh, debutant drivers, but uh, um, Howard, not exactly a, um, the most unknown driver in the world, at least uh, definitely not this car here. Uh, one of the more anticipated uh, promoters option one-off entries that the series has had. And uh, yeah, it looks like he's gonna be able to get around Hadeline. He's gonna have the inside line, but look, there's the 11. Eklund is right there as well. So the so the uh, so that rivalry is gonna uh, is gonna be all back is gonna be back on again and there we go Hadeland is just hung out to dry and Eklund really sending it in really close to the back end of the double zero Howard uh, Eklund is crowding Howard very mu a lot more than anyone else seemingly uh, she's been crowding other cars like that not just the double zero but not, not giving him a whole lot of room there I think Howard is gonna let her slip underneath yes and there it goes. Eklund now, you want to talk about how far back Eklund was a few laps ago. And to see that she just rocketed right up here into this. And there's the battle for the lead right behind this. So this is going to be a bit messy. You have um, you have, uh, you have have one of the hottest uh, intra-team rivalries in the grid. That's right in front of the battle for the lead. Um, this could get interesting. And Ryan Matthews is not giving up because he's slowly starting to creep back in on Tom Moore here. Adelant in the 19 might get a bit of, might uh, have to cede a place here, but um, might have to cede that to the four. 
Oh, uh, but I don't see her exactly moving over. She is defending that line quite aggressively. Uh, she's gonna force the uh, gonna force more to make a move. And now they're getting around the zero of Casey Lester. Lester having a pretty pretty decent out, uh, outing, even though he is going another lap down in that zero car, that black and the neon yellow car. Uh, Tom Moore going to be able to get by him fairly easily as Howard putting all of them in his mirrors. And here is Ryan Matthews going under the zero. He's going to Matthews going to have another run at the lead here. Hadland very wide off the fourth corner, and that could be a. Uh, that could be it as far as the battle for 18th. Oh! Hadeland not uh, not exactly uh, playing nice with the race leader here. It's nice to see that you have rivalries so intense that they're essentially affecting the battle for the lead. At least, uh, at least I am. I don't think anyone on the pit wall is. And Hadeland not giving up either. And I think Howard has gotten by Eklund. And Eklund is swinging it very wide. And uh, I think Tom Moore wants to be away from both of these cars because the 11 and the 19, and we do have cars in the pit lane. I saw Orman and Unlaro in. Oh boy! And yes, Ryan Matthews is coming into the pits along with Yokoyama. Saul Fischel is in. Point out, Saul Fischel's quietly having a pretty good run today. Um, he is kind of a hard driver to miss sometimes. Is Fischel because uh, well, he hasn't been around for very long. For starters, Howard in. That was a bit of a late pit there for Howard. They must have called him in suddenly. And uh, here is uh, Moore staying out a bit late along with Eklund, who he has just put a lap down. So we're going to see, um, is he going to pit in this time? Yes, looks like he will be. That's going to be a very crowded pit lane, so that might not be to, that might not benefit him as much. But he is, does have the first pit stall, and... See where he comes out. Where is the 06 car? There's the 81, Craig Yonser. There is Howard. Howard's going to go by. There's Freya Mast, the 898. Haven't really shown much of Freya Mast or much throughout the field, really, because there's just... Whoa! There's been just a couple of uh, really strong battles throughout the field that have uh, kind of gone on for a long period of time that we've been focusing the most on. And, yes, he's ahead of Matthews and ahead of both the Lynx cars, it looks like. At least both the ones he was having having a deal with, and oh no, uh, Matthews is gonna have to hold off the 11. I don't think he's expecting to have to do that. But Ben Atkins has worked his way up to third. So the Englishman, the former Dash Cup champion, not getting a whole lot of uh, camera attention at the moment. But um, anyway, but uh, he's definitely getting some attention for me uh, from right now. That's for sure. There is Matthews, who's now in the middle of a battle for position. I don't think he wants any part to do with, but at the same time, he may have his first Master Cup win on the line. Uh, decisions, decisions. Uh, but also, he has to chase down someone who has also never won a TM Master Cup Series race before. Oh boy. <laughs> Sometimes, and Eklund's going up, uh, swinging it a bit wide. I think that might be let him go, but I don't think that was on purpose. Uh, no, I don't think so either, because Eklund is not giving up. Uh, Eklund, I think, is trying to prove a point here. Uh, you kind of wonder now, uh, what, what's going on with, uh, you kind of wonder whether or not race control is going to, uh, may have something to say about it, because, um, uh, at this point, uh, Eklund is becoming quite meddlesome with the battle for the win here. And, uh, I think you could safely argue that she is definitely costing time for Ryan Matthews to be able to run down Tom Moore. Here's Ben Atkins in the 90 car. We finally get to show him some love because uh, he's been uh, kind of uh, hanging around in third for ever since the uh, last pit. Uh, well, came out of the pits in third. Great pit work there for Matthews Motorsports. But now he's got a chance to run his boss down. And Ben Atkins earlier in the race was very strong early in the run but fell off late. And I do wonder whether or not this uh, this run we're going to get at the end is going to be long enough for Atkins to fall back. I'm tempted to say it might not be, as Tom Moore is still in the lead here in car number four. Just got under, just got under 20 laps to go. Uh, Ryan Matthews a long way behind him, but he looks like Matthews may have finally been able to deal with the two Lynx cars. But they've cost him at they've cost him a lot of time. And I cannot understate that enough because uh, uh, Eklund and Hadeland are not exactly... 
We're filling his mirrors with some, uh, say some very interesting maneuvers as we caught some of them. Not all of them, apparently. Uh, right, so, but this is still going to be Ryan Matthews, his best outing to date by a long shot. And, uh, kind of wonder how much more it could have been here. Kind of wonder also whether or not this race might, that, uh, oh, Eklund wide. Their handling may have gone on the 11. There's Ruiz wanting to capitalize on this battle, as well as Hadeland's going to be able to go by the Swede. Here comes Ruiz. There's Atkins, who probably doesn't quite know what to make of this. Uh, this is great stuff to watch here, but I don't think too many... There's going to be some people that are going to be uh, rather scathing of this, even though it is still... Even though it's technically fair game for them to all race each other this hard. Uh... You do wonder whether or not uh, some people will be a little bit more upset than others at uh, cars that are one lap down racing the car in second as uh, as hard as they would as hard as they would the leader perhaps. Anyways, Eklund uh, doing her best uh, doing her best job to not make friends on the racetrack seemingly. Uh, uh, but either way, pretty good showing from the Swede even though she's dropped back to 21st and she has of course lost 20th. Oh, we got a left rear tire down on. The car number eight. That's disappointing, it looks like. At least we think it's a tire. Not exactly saying. It looks like they it looks like that might be what it is. And Fischl bringing it in. I wonder if he's had contact with somebody else. And here's Atkin. Oh no. And here comes uh, Eklund again. I think someone must have told Eklund that 21st doesn't pay for any points and she wants to go to try to get uh, try to get Ruiz at the very least. Atkins, I think, is best served to just let Eklund go because 4th place is not anywhere near him at the moment. And uh, at this point, uh, Eklund might just be a rolling caution because uh, some of the moves she's been pulling could be... Uh, she's definitely showing a lot of speed here and a lot of determination, which definitely I approve of, but... Um, Kind of wonder whether... Oh, Cameron Taylor a bit wide. And yes, that's the car in fourth. And yeah, he, Cameron Taylor's got a ways to go. And we got the eight car on the apron again. So I wonder what's going on with Fischl there. Keep him on the apron there. Oh, that could be a headache and a half if anything were to happen there. Oh, yep. I knew this was going to happen. Um, this is, this is going to be a battle for position. Ruiz has gotten by both of the Lynx cars. So, and I am showing that this is for, scoring is saying this is for 19th. All right then. So, both of them now in a points paying position. And yes, that would be for that because Fischl was ahead of them both. Um, so, who wants two points and who wants one between those two? And anyways, now we're going to see, oh, Fischl, what are you doing, mate? Get off the track. There's definitely something wrong with the eight car, but holy... Someone needs to knock some sense into some crew chiefs, I think. Um, uh, Tom Moore in the four car, holding on to the lead here. And uh, Howard is going to try to go to the full, go the full count. He wants to try to at least be able to complete all the lap, uh, every single lap in the race. Kind of wonder if Moore will at least allow him the courtesy of doing that on debut, especially when Howard has uh, done quite well today, I would say. Uh, but Tom Moore in this number four car, I'd have to say... It's really hard to say that uh, this is not anything more than a coming out party for him because Tom Moore with Leonid Roderick on the on the booth calling strategy for him has been and that's already proven to be a dynamite combination and yeah he's slowing up Tom Moore slowing up a little bit are they gonna let the double zero go as this is the white flag there no I don't think he is um, so Tom Moore car number four it's gonna be a first win for him at Volpe Tom Moore takes the win at Los Angeles and in a dominant fashion leading almost three quarters of the total distance. Completing the podium are the two Matthews Motorsport cars, Ryan Matthews and Ben Atkins, both of them a long ways adrift of the eventual race winner. Chris Davenport in fifth was a good showing for him. Scott Bates, Castaneda, Evgeny Kuznetsov had a very quiet run all day, did Kuznetsov, but this will be a great, uh, that's going to be a great result for the fan favorite. A very strong effort from Kurt Pliskin to come home in ninth place, especially since he's been feeling under the weather all weekend long. He was complaining of headaches on Friday and it got worse throughout the day. And this morning it evolved into fever-like symptoms, but he was still able to qualify the car and race the car. 
But Pliskin was the only driver that finished in the top 10 to not be in the media center, and we completely understand why. To be honest with you, it's a miracle that he was even medically cleared to drive in the first place. Whether or not you think that shows a lot of toughness or carelessness is up to your interpretation. That being said, a good effort from him tonight. Alessandro Rossini completes the top 10 with a solid effort in the number 3 Volpe. And on the right column, you'll notice people that had very quiet days and people that had very eventful days. Arto Kekkonen had a quiet run, so did Joe Olenek, Adrian Devereaux. Tony Durbin was able to stay on the lead lap, I'd like to point out. And Zachary Fitzwater, a strong debut for a promoter's option. Bad pit work cost Luciano Savarola a better result than 12th. Daffy Howard and Tim Ruiz were basically sitting in the $75 seats for Ingrid Hadland and Liv Eklund doing their best to irritate as many people around them as possible. In her post-race interview, all Eklund had to say was, is, quote, well, if they're faster than me and they really are a lap ahead of me, then pass me. That's probably going to go over about as well as a root canal with some other teams in the grid today. Given that Timothy Ruiz came from 37th on the grid to finish ahead of both Eklund and Hadland, I don't think he's going to be one of those people disappointed in how they were racing each other. So this is going to be fun. Something else that's looking quite fun are the driver standings after two races. And one thing you see at the top are two former Team Star USA teammates, Tom Moore and Cameron Taylor. So while it seems quite clear that Peter Keyes' old operation had a great eye for talent, they clearly couldn't get out of their own way because Moore and Taylor are clearly some of the better drivers on the grid at the moment. That being said, we're still very early in the season and there's probably going to be a lot of volatility in the Drivers' Championship standings for at least a few races. You'll notice Kevin Dwyer is still 17th. He only has one start. His next planned start isn't going to be for a little while, so he's probably going to drop out of the top 20 unless something really weird happens. One look at the Independence Trophy and Mason Yokoyama is on top with 76 points, the Texan leading the way. Remember that the Independence Trophy only counts the best four results across the whole season. So, these guys could qualify for a special event and could essentially get a mulligan result if they're able to do well enough in that race. Before we even think about a special event, the series is going to head to Southern Illinois near the Kentucky border to a little town called Carbondale, which will play host to the third round of the championship. If you'd like to watch some previous events in the series, check out this list over here, or check out this video from a friend of the show.